Those classes were interrupted, as we all know. Exams were canceled. You know, many of our students draw so much satisfaction from demonstrating excellence through exam. They want exam. I think our, our biggest opportunity is to fix our dreams with gold. Our biggest opportunity is to be the Kintsugi artist of our dreams. And it's everybody's job to actually help our youth help you so that your dreams remain alive. Not because they are important to you alone, but because they are important to everyone. They are important to all of us. Now, when we talk about, when we talk about the dreams, we sometimes talk about the work that we want to do, the jobs that we want to do, the way we will earn our living, the way we'll be adding value to, to this world. And I would like to uh, share with you a model so that you see how the world of job is changing. You know, personally, I believe that we bring to any endeavor, to any undertaking, to anything that we do, three types of capabilities, three types of labor. We bring our, our physical labor, which is our capability to move things around and use our muscles. And we bring our cognitive capability, our capability to think, and we bring our emotional capability, our emotional labor, which is our ability to connect with people, our ability to build trust, our ability to empathize with other people. And interestingly, we as human beings have been throughout the history of civilization on a journey of trying to find someone or something else to do the work on our behalf. We don't like to do you know, very difficult kind of uh, activities. So since the agriculture uh, revolution, since we learned how to, how, since we invented the wheel 3,500 uh, uh, years uh, BC, we have been on a journey of trying to either use some form of technology or animal power to actually do the, the physical work that we do. So we kept on, you know, um, you, um, domesticating animals, building better wheels and better machines so that we can do uh, less and less physical difficult work. This continued until the time of the first industrial revolution in the 19th century. And that was the time where James Watt was able to perfect the steam engine. And suddenly, we were able to make machines that are faster, much stronger than us as human beings. And that was the time where many people lost their jobs. People used to work in, in, um, in looms. They are making uh, fab uh, fabrics, they are knitting um, fabrics. They lost their jobs. People who worked on the farms lost their jobs. It was a time of huge disruption. And that was the time where Harriet Watt University started, around that time. And we started to prepare people for the new work, for the new uh, life that, that the uh, first Industrial Revolution sort of brought to all of us. And that was the time where people start to go to schools and universities to become engineers and become accountants and learn about um, how to use their cognitive capabilities. So there was a shift from the focus on human beings as a source of muscular power to the, force, to, to the human beings as a source of cognitive capabilities, thinking. And that was the time where many universities started to create big classes to prepare people for this, um, for this kind of work. And we thought that we as human beings, we will always be bringing this kind of um, value to the world. We are able to think. And, but slowly, 
we started to make machines who were able to somehow do some cognitive work. We started to make calculators that could add up numbers. Now, we take this for granted, but actually adding up numbers is quite a, 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 thinking, a thinking process. And for a machine to do it, it's, it's actually very, very interesting. But anyway, slowly we started to make machines who are able to uh, have memory and able to manipulate memories and add them. So a machine could remember three, then think of the operator plus, and then has a memory of five, and then has a, a bit of a process and give you an answer eight. Sounds very trivial, but actually very difficult to do with the machine. What has happened? The, these machines that we call calculators or computers kept on being improved by us, and they started to become faster and faster and had bigger and bigger memory until we reached a stage in, in 1997 where for the first time in our history, a computer was able to beat the human champion in chess. Now, chess is a very special game because for thousands of years, we thought chess was special. We thought chess was human. We thought only a human being can play chess. But now, there is no human being that can beat computer in chess. We lost that. Now, interestingly, as we, as we move on, we are now in a space where there is no human doctor who can actually do diagnosis better than the machine. So uh, computers are better, better than us in medical diagnosis. Uh, uh, computers are better than us in um, balancing the books and accounting. So slowly, the value that we bring to the world of work as human beings through our ability to think has diminished. So what is left for us? We have the third domain, our emotional capability, our capability of being self-aware, our capability to be motivated, our capability to build trust within others. This is something that the machines are yet to be good at. We actually don't know, maybe one day they will be even better than us at that. But at least for now, this is something that machine has made very little uh, progress at. As a matter of fact, if you look at the diagram and you look at the, the skills or capabilities that you have on, on your right hand side, ethics, relationships, empathy, awareness, creativity, and critical thinking. These are the things that employers say we want our graduates to have. These are the things that through them, we can future-proof ourselves. We can make sure that we can go into the future with a lot of confidence, that things can change, but we can create something else. Uh, machines can become faster than us. Machines can remember so many things more than us, but we can connect with other people. We can look someone in the eye and make them feel comfortable. Maybe this is something that the machine cannot do now. We can say one word and can, we can put someone at ease. So these are the skills that we would like our youth to learn. These are the skills that will be so important for getting a job. These are the skills that are going to be very important to be successful at life. As a matter of fact, report after report, if you read, they keep on referring to these skills. This is a report from Kazana Research Institute that interviewed multiple in, uh, employers, and they are saying the same thing. They are saying, we want students who are able to have strong work ethics, have good communication skills, they are creative, have analytical thinking, uh, have positive attitude, positive mindset. These are things that are you know, we call them soft skills, but interestingly, they're very hard to teach. They're very hard to learn. They're even harder to examine. You know, if I teach you one plus two is three, I could give you a, a test and you could say, and I could certify whether you know it or not. But how do I certify you as a great communicator? How do I certify you as a person with empathy? These are very difficult things and they require very long time to acquire and develop, 
and they are acquired in a personalized way. So I could put you all in a class and I say, you have to remember to multiply seven times nine and seven times eight, and probably you will all remember it. But if I want to teach you how to be a team player, the way that you will do it will be different from the way you will do it because we are all different uh, individuals. But these are very important skills and we need to do it. This is Andy Haldane, chief economist of Bank of England. He said that he believes that our youth should focus on learning emotional intelligence and developing these skills rather than cognitive skills, just thinking skills, because we are going to be running against the robots. So just imagine if you want to grow your cognitive capability, let's say memory, will you ever have more memory than your mobile phone? You lost this game. You know, you can't go in a race where you know you are losing. You know, physically, are you faster or a car? You absolutely, the machine will be faster, stronger than us. So we need to really bring the battle to where humanity wins. And this is what we all need. And this is extremely important. Now, we call this at Harriet Watt University positive education. And positive education is the approach to education that only, not only focuses on academic excellence and academic achievement, which is extremely important, but it also focuses on building character, building positive mindset, and also providing an environment in which the well-being is taken care of. We also focus on creating a sense of purpose. So every one of our students and every one of our staff will have to develop what we call an impact statement. You know, if you go to any university in the world and ask a student, why are you doing here? She or he will look you in the eyes and say, well, I'm doing mechanical engineering or I'm doing psychology or I'm doing accountancy. But the dream is when you come to this university and ask someone, why are you, why are you doing, young lady? She will look you in the eyes and say, before I graduate, I'm going to plant a million trees because throughout their lifetime, they are going to remove 100,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing chemical engineering. Now, that bit in the beginning is the purpose, is the impact that you want to have on the world. And research has shown people who know what brings meaning to their life, what is their life purpose, are happier, are more successful, are healthier, are paid more, and they have a better more positive impact on, on the world. So we see positive education as our way of mobilizing your purpose and your purpose and your purpose into positive impact on the world while being the best engineer and the best accountant and the best psychologist and the best actuarial scientist and the best computer scientist in the world. So that sense of purpose will keep us anchored. And we talked about future proofing. Now, I really don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I know there'll be a lot of change. There'll be a lot of technology. There'll be a lot of job loss. You know, imagine, any one of you imagine that we'll have a pandemic and we will not travel and we'll have to wear masks and we have to do all. You haven't thought about that, but it happened and it may happen again. And the only way for us to to be ready for that is to be creative, to be empathetic, to be collaborative, to be able to motivate our own selves. You know, people are struggling with, with self-motivation as well. So let me tell you about some of the initiatives that we do have at Harriet Watt University to do exactly that. Because you'll, you'll ask me, how do I build all of these things that you are, you are talking about? So one of the things, uh, one of signature programs that we have is the Empower program. The Empower program 
as you can see, goes in four uh, stages. The first stage is about knowing and leading self. Second stage is about leading teams. The third stage is about leading communities. And the fourth stage is about leading enterprise. And it has six different columns or six different domains. So you have global citizenship, leadership and impact. You have emotional intelligence, resilience and happiness. You have people skills. You have entrepreneurship, innovation and creativity, critical thinking and decision making. And also you have employability and industrial relevance. And we take our students through this journey. So every year one students will have to complete the first level. We call it the WATT level, W-A-T-T. And the reason we call it WATT, I mean, first our university is called Harriet Watt. James Watt was the man who perfected the steam engine and launched the first industrial revolution. But also the WATT is the unit of measuring the power. And if you buy a light bulb, it, it will have a wattage on it. So in the first level, we expect our students to accumulate anywhere between up to 999 watts. So you have a light bulb that lit for yourself. You be self-aware and able to lead yourself. At the next level, when you have like a bigger bulb, you could actually lead yourself and a group of people with you. So that's team leadership, and that's the kilowatt. At the megawatt level, you have a huge light bulb that could actually lit a village. And at the enterprise level, when you do the gigawatt, you are ready to power the world. So this is how we take the students through a structured way. But the starting point is to come up with their own impact statement. What is their purpose? And what, is the, what brings meaning to, to their life? I'm going to show you a video of some students speaking about their uh, impact statement. So just one or two minutes. Education should empower our students beyond academic achievements. It should build character and the soft skills needed for success in life and to enhance personal well-being. It's all about cultivating a sense of purpose, which will lead to making an impact on the world around us. At Harriet Watt University, we call this positive education. I am a writer. I am a bridge builder. I am a light bulb. I am a change maker. I am a specialist. I am a breath of fresh air. I am a change I am a soul warrior. I hope to communicate to other people my own sentiments to express what I feel about issues in today's world. My purpose is to help others develop a personal understanding and perspective of the world around them. I aim to encourage the sharing of opinions and perspectives between people from different walks of life, resulting in the development of positive world views. My purpose is to encourage and support the community around me to reach the best versions of themselves. My purpose is to enhance youth participation and engagement in leadership programs by creating positive changes at individual and community levels. I aim to build, innovate, and transform the world towards sustainability, and I dedicate my life towards building healthy teams and sustainable communities where people get to enjoy life with more happiness, growth, recognition, and purpose. I wanted to be the sparks of summer life as I believe everyone has the obligation to make the world a better place. I promise to the best of my abilities to contribute to the sustainability of this country and give impact to others. My purpose is to help people manage their financial matters in order for them to achieve a better financial security and also to reduce their financial burden on their shoulders. I find joy in connecting with other individuals in hopes of adding value into their lives. My purpose is to help others in all capacities to create a positive impact in their lives. I aim to create a platform with the help of industry leaders for young individuals with mental health issues and those who need support and guidance to pursue their dreams in life. So what will be your impact? Because this is what we ask our students. We notice when we ask the young people, the aspiring students, what degree you want to do? Often they say, I'm not sure. But when we say what impact you want to have on the world, they are somehow clearer. 
There are those who are passionate about the environment and those who would like to help animals and those who would like to help, you know, the, the less fortunate are those who want to help with educating, um, you know, the young people who don't have access to education. So this is the question we ask. What impact do you want to have on the world? And this is a question that I encourage you to think about and I encourage you to ask yourself. Now, I'm approaching the end of, uh, of my, my talk. And I really think that there are positive things that can come from the pandemic. And I'm on a journey to trying to reframe the way we look at this challenge. So COVID will always be something that we fear and dislike. But how about we change the way we think about COVID? And I came up with this acronym, COVID, where I said, C is for the communication. Communicate, tell us your story, tell us who you are, tell us how is, what is your dream and how are you future-proofing it? And how is your dream going to make the world a better place? O is for opportunity. Always look for opportunities because guess what? In the darkest moments, there will always be some opportunities if you are able to see them. V is for vision. Where is your vision for the world? After COVID is gone, and it will be gone, are we going to go back to the same old ways? I see you nodding, saying no. Why? And what is that new thing that you want us to do? Think about it now. Don't wait for it to, to happen to you. I is for impact. Ask yourself, what impact do you want to have on the world? And D is for development. Always develop yourself. Always read books. Always watch some talks that talks about technology, the future, the areas that you are interested in, and also help others develop. You know, I am a parent of three boys. They are 18, um, 14, and six. And I, my, my kids are very good. They're very polite, they're very lovely. But just like many of you, when they reach the time to select their subjects for their, they're doing IGCSE, I say, what do you wanna do? And they say, I'm not sure. And sometimes the way that the school is trying to help them I don't see it's helpful because they just say, oh, pick whatever you like, or pick whatever you're passionate about. So they, sometimes they come up with a combination that is, for me as an educator, sort of challenging. So it's a mix of photography and business and a few other things. And I say, okay, so in the future, may, do you think you might be considering engineering? Yeah, yeah, I might wanna do engineering. I say, but if you selected these things, you can't do engineering anymore. Oh, but they say, pick whatever you like, and currently I like these things. So that disconnect between the courses they wanna do eventually, the, the degrees they wanna pursue, and the subject that they are taking, sometimes is a source of stress for the students, absolutely for the parents, and sometimes the the, the experience of a young person trying to find their way, I think is not facilitated as much it should be. So we came up with a program. We call it Start Smart. And this program is developed to aid both parents and also students who are pursuing SPM, finishing SPM, maybe pursuing their STPM or A-level, to actually select their next steps so that they are successful and they are happy and they are working closely with their families. So this, this, this program has three workshops. And every workshop will take two hours. So it's quite an extensive program. But we are doing it in 
where the first uh, workshop, which is partnering for success, is happening in the, with the existence of the parents. So the parents need to join their kids for the first session. And they will need to work together on what do they want to do, and we will facilitate that. We'll do this for around two hours. The second and third uh, workshops will be done by the students alone, and they will be around charting the course. The students will think of which direction they want to, to go, and in the third session, they will be building some plans and designing some steps so that they can succeed. And all of that happening in partnership with, with the parents so that everybody knows why they are doing what they are doing. The first um, really pilot of this program will start on 24th of April. And uh, if you are interested, you could um, um, take a picture of this and, and, and check it out online. Uh, although if you go online, it will say that actually application is closed because we are just selecting 10 students for the first you know, pilot. This is a lot of work that we are, we, are, we are putting. But if you go and register, we will take your uh, interest and we are going to uh, uh, come back to you because we plan to have more sessions in, in, in the future. So I, I reached the end of my talk, but I wanna go back to where I started. Dreams are not only a human right, Dreams are a human duty. And it's a pleasure to work with you so that your dreams are big, your dreams are ambitious, and so that your dreams are achieved. Thank you very much. I'm happy to take any questions. And I think the talk is online, so we might have some questions from the online community as well. Yeah, but happy to take any questions if, uh, if you have any. It's time to ask questions. And there's no silly question. Every question is great. You have one. Is the process to create an impact statement long? Uh, it takes eight hours. When the students join us, it takes eight hours over four weeks. So we do two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, and they are, uh, the process is done in groups of 10 facilitated by an impact coach. It's, um, I don't think it's long because the outcome that you'll get is a statement that really describes who you are, what brings meaning to your life, and how you want to mobilize your purpose in, in the world. And this is a, a great investment. And if you join Harriet Watt University, the uh, impact statement is actually part of a course and you will get uh, marks and, and credit for it. My son has not been doing well in his studies, wanted to give up as a parent, I'm worried. Any advice? I think you need to, 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 to speak with, with your son and honestly, the Start Smart is a program that's designed for this kind of conversations because we believe that every human being has her or his own special magic. Everyone is here for a reason and everyone has a capability and a value to add. I think our role as parents and as, um, as educators to find uh, about that. So I would, I would ask what's going on. I would, I would have a conversation. Uh, but uh, sometimes what you need is a facilitated conversation. So the Start Smart program is designed by our positive psychologists. We have professor of positive psychology who, who, uh, who helped us design that. And there is a lot of science behind it. Because sometimes also when you speak to, to your, your child and say what's going on, they say there's nothing. So it's, not, it's actually not the easiest of the conversations. But I, uh, I understand you, worry. I'm a parent too. Um, please don't give up. That's very important. Just never give up on your child. 
Now it seems like students will be missing out on the experiences of conventional campus life. How do you think this will affect them in terms of their studies? Can they cope? So the, the short answer is human beings are very resilient creatures. And I think while uh, we are all missing on our physical face-to-face -face experiences, we also realize that there are opportunities when, when we do things digitally. There, are, there is convenience and there is also the opportunity to work, people, work with people from different parts of the, of the world. But really the hope is as the vaccine is rolled out and um, as the world comes out of this, then we will be having uh, more and more uh, experiences on, on campus. So for example, uh, I was here yesterday on, on, on campus and I walked into the library and students are using the library. So we are not entirely losing on the on-campus experience. As a matter of fact, we are now on, on campus. Yeah, we, we are uh, observing um, physical distancing and everyone apart from me because I'm speaking is wearing a mask. But um, uh, I think we will, we will deal with that. And just I said, just like the Kintsugi, the experience when it's you know, roughened up, when it's sort of challenged, it could actually make, uh, make us help build resilience. And it depends on, so the mindset is extremely important. You know, if the campus is closed, it's closed. But what we think about it, how we rationalize it to ourselves is extremely important. Is it really free? Yes, it is free. And to prove that it's free, even if you want to join a course that we don't offer, you know, Harriet Watt doesn't offer medicine, Harriet Watt doesn't offer law, and you apply and we accept you, we will, we will, uh, we will give it to you for free. So this is really, really a gift from us to the parents who wrote to us and say, I am very worried. And when I go to any college or university and say, I'm concerned, my daughter is also stressed out because of all of these challenges that we are facing, uh, people will come back and say, oh, let me tell you about the courses we sell. So this is not, while we would love that after you finish the Start Smart, we would love that you join us, but it's not a, a condition. If you go and check the, the, the website, you'll find a field that says, what is the reason for you to join uh, Start Smart? We want you to really tell us why you want to join the Start, Start Smart program. So this is very important criteria for us to, to pick because as I told you, for this to be meaningful, we are doing it in a group of 10 students. So this is not like I put 100 students and talk at them. And in the first session, we'll work with both the students and their parents. So a lot of very individual work. But we are, this is actually, for our success coaches, for our positive psychologists to achieve an impact on the world. And we are very passionate about it and it is absolutely free. Now, if you register and you get accepted, we expect you to be there. And we expect you to be there for the free sessions. And we expect you to be there on time because if you, are, if you don't show up, you've taken the place of someone else. So this is the only thing that we are requesting um, uh, in return. Is that all? Ah. What sets Harriet Watt apart from the other UK universities here in Malaysia? I think every university is, is different in its own way. It's different in the courses that they provide, the campus they have, their culture, and that's why you know, pick and choose what, what suits you. But if I were to, uh, to pick one or two things, I would first pick the um, global connectedness of our university. So our university is, um, I, th I, I think we are the only one that uh, every one of our students, just by completing and passing their, uh, their, their uh, uh, course requirement, they are entitled to go and study in any of other co campuses. So if you finish your first year in 
psychology or mechanical engineering or whatever, then, and you want to go to Edinburgh to continue, then there are no question asked. Yes, you need to pay higher fees there, but uh, we don't set any limits on, on the campus transfer. Now, uh, in 2020, we stopped this program because we couldn't uh, move people around. But in, even this year, we have some of our students who moved to Edinburgh in, in January. The other thing that I believe that set us apart from every, every other university in the world is our access to positive education. There is no other university in the world where every student, these are not just the video that I've showed, not selected students, every student will have to develop an impact statement, every student will have to align the project that they are working on to their impact statement. Our students, after they completed their impact statement, they went on and some of them uh, run crowdfunding campaigns and raise funds for the things that they are passionate about. We had some of our students who actually raised funds to, to buy um, tablets for some university students in, you know, in, in other states who were unable to get their own tablets so that they could continue their studies. We had a group of students who raised money. So for the uh, turtle hatchery, they raised around just short of 3,000 ringgit to donate it to the uh, turtle hatchery to help uh, reju rejuvenate the the turtle population in, in, our, in our oceans. So we are really a purpose-driven community and we get our students to reach out to their purpose and deploy it, mobilize it positively in the world. I think these are some of the things that, uh, that, that set us apart from any other uh, university in the country or maybe even uh, in the world. That's it. Okay, if you guys don't have any questions, I would like to thank you very much for uh, coming here and uh, may all your dreams come true. Thank you.